This is Dr. J. Welcome to Thesis in 101, where you have to psych yourself up before uploading anything to turn it in. In this series, we cover tips and tricks to help you in your research journey. If you missed the previous lessons of this series, check out the description box below for the links. If you are interested and you would like to see more videos like this, please give this a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Today's focus is on the so what question. Let's get right into it. In our previous tutorials, we covered the importance of the golden thread and ways you can weave it through alignment. As a reminder, the golden thread is a term used to show that all your sections or chapters in your deliverable at the end answers the so what question. As in, what is the point of your research? What is your central argument? Here is a quick recap of our example as covered in the previous lessons. Our topic, towards an understanding of the digital native perception and readiness for change in the primary and secondary school system. Background and intro, there is a call to radically change the school system because it has a presumably new type of student called the digital native who is practically addicted to technology. A problem statement is that there is no research on the subject that speaks to the school kids in South Africa. So how do you know you're doing the right thing by radically changing the school system? In our study, we would like to understand their digital native status, their learning preferences, and how ready they are for the change in the school system when it comes to the use of technology. In our lit review, we had a few arguments on socioeconomic conditions, parental control, skills transfer, how the school system itself may be influenced by a tech-heavy curriculum, and the learning preferences of the digital native. We have also designed our research plan and performed our data analysis. Now it is time to answer the so what question. You can do this by stating your key findings in your research discussion chapter. Of course, this chapter must also be aligned with the previous chapters and title. As such, we will be using our visual board that we created in our previous tutorial to promote alignment and to continue weaving our golden thread. Before we continue weaving, we must bear in mind that when we do research, the aim is to contribute to knowledge. And one of the ways you can demonstrate this to your reader is to compare your findings to literature. Not all findings will have comparative literature, but it is always a good thing to consider it at this point. So our first key finding is that literature says that all kids between a certain age are considered digital native because of their proficiency in the use of technology. But the data in our study contradicts this notion and concludes that being a certain age does not guarantee digital native status. However, age is a contributing factor when it comes to the preferences for technology because the tech preferences change as the kids get older. Our data also shows a trend that their use of technology rarely exceeds the realm of programs that is meant for chatting and entertainment. So they know how to use things like Insta and Snapchat, but they don't know the difference between a column and a row in Excel. Thus, chances are that these skills may not be as transferable from home life to school life. Another factor is parental control. Most kids are only allowed to use tech for a limited time per day. This study also suggests that the socioeconomic status of an individual plays a pivotal role in the digital divide. So again, not everyone that is part of the current generation can be considered a digital native because not all have the same access to tech. In our third key finding, we concede, which is in line with literature, that there is no denying that there are major improvements technology can bring to the learning environment. However, a significant number of students were concerned with the self-discipline that comes with the use of technology in the classroom because their experience is that they use tech for socializing and entertainment and they feel that access to those things will be distracting. Our study also found that while kids were exposed to technology, their proficiency in the use of this tech is not at the same level that literature suggests, so there would need to be a huge learning curve for the kids to use tech in the classroom. Another finding was that most students that attend schools that are situated in the low and middle income areas also voice the concern about safety regarding doing homework that requires tech. Since most of them do not have computers at home, they need to stay after school or they have to visit their public library, so they feel that there are times when they have to choose between safety and education. A surprising finding was that kids advised that they would much rather have the teacher focus on them as opposed to fiddle with technology. This suggests that they believe to some extent that tech is an inhibitor as opposed to an enabler of learning. So at the end of it all we conclude that the majority of the primary and secondary school kids in South Africa are not considered a digital native to the degree that is described in literature and in public opinion. 
In addition, introducing technology in the classroom may not result in the immediate uptake thereof as described by the advocates for a radical change in the school system because the kids have reservations about it and do not have the skills to use the tech in a learning environment without some major upskilling. Their concern about the teacher's focus indicates that they value being instructed by a teacher. This means that even if they are considered a digital native, they still prefer being taught by a subject matter expert and a curriculum as opposed to solely on their own through trial and error, as per some literature suggestion. Taking into consideration our findings and the answers to our research questions and our title, we are now in the position to answer the so what question, which is the final step in weaving the golden thread. So we tell our reader, look, we understand the public's concern, but based on our data, it looks like the type of student you are describing is not exactly the type of student we have in our current school system. So, they may not need, and by the looks of it, they are certainly not ready for this radical change that you want to implement. In summary, looking at all the lessons of the series, the golden thread is extremely important. You don't have a thesis without it. Weave your golden thread through alignment. And last but certainly not least, always answer the so what question that concludes the series on the golden thread thank you for watching let me know if there are any other topics you would like me to cover signing off